Hello everybody, it's TJ. Welcome back to New Zealand Mysteries. Awesome to have you guys here. Well, subscribers, we actually did it and I'm so freaking excited. Um, we made it to 1,000 subs and over. So I never thought that I would get that far, that people would care as much as I do and want to hear these cases and help. And I just want to thank everybody because obviously I could not have done it without you. It goes without saying. If you're new around here, uh, I like to cover cases from New Zealand, obviously. And I don't do makeup, I don't tell stories. What I try to do is just tell the information from uh, the news sources that we do have and the problem is we only have about two three or four at the very most in New Zealand um, so sometimes it's slim pickings but I really try just to get the facts of the case across and the idea is we want to share the information as much as possible because these cases can be solved we need them to be solved for the families they need justice so uh, that is what we do here on New Zealand Mysteries quickly before we get started I have always said that once we hit 1,000 subs that I will consider doing some live streams and what I thought that I would do them about is those cases that there is not enough information on to do a full video sometimes there's only just you know one or two pages of short blurbs and I can't really find a lot of information um, so I thought maybe that would be a really good idea uh, to do those cases on live stream although I don't want to look like a dick and start a live stream and have no one turn up I don't know I guess I guess everybody has to start somewhere so maybe that does have to happen but if that's something that you would like to see happen or something that you take part in please let me know in the comments below but right now let's get started and look at the case we're going to cover today Today's case is the very sad and bizarre case. Uh, all of our cases are sad, but uh, this beautiful lady, Kay Stewart, went for a walk in the Rematarka Forest Park here in New Zealand for a short walk before she had to pick up her daughter and uh, went missing. And there's been no sign of her whatsoever, but you may be able to help. So let's take a look. Quickly, let's take a look at Rimataka Forest Park uh, on Wikipedia. It is a protected area near Wellington, New Zealand. The park covers 220 square kilometres, which is 85 square miles, uh, encompassing the Catchpool Valley and Valley and the Arongo Rongo Valley at the southern end of the Rimataka Ranges. Established in 1972, the park contains several short walks and huts that can be booked and accessed by longer bush, tra uh, bush tramps. God, great start, isn't it? Basically, it's a bloody big, um, dense bushland with lots of walks and stuff. It's probably not big if you're overseas, but for us it's pretty big. And it's located here in Wellington at the bottom of the North Island. Now, before we get into the first article or the first place we're going to look at, I wanted to point out on this map a few things. Down the bottom here, I think and from what I can gather the visitor information kiosk uh, or center is in this area here this is coast road leading in to the forest park this part up here is the Catchpool Valley Road up the top here is a car park and that is the starting point of quite a few tracks. It's the start of the Natonga Nature Walk uh, here. Let's go in a bit closer and change the view here. So the Natonga Nature Walk is this one here that comes down. Now uh, from the entrance to the park just here uh, visitor centre it is approximately two kilometres up here to the car park at the top I want to make note of this little sh house cabin batch we call it in New Zealand which is just here on Coast Road so we might come back to this but just keep in 
thinking about this. So first we're going to newzealandmissing.wordpress.com. This is the official website for us, New Zealand Mysteries. So uh, I have already done a story here, but just never for the YouTube or, uh, channel. Please come and visit uh, on our website. We have a lot of useful information, including lots of cases on here. All right, at 10.30 a.m. on the 13th of June 2005, Kay Stewart, a 62-year-old former All Blacks physiotherapist, dropped her daughter off at the Time Out Community Centre in Wainuiomata to teach a painting class. Kay is expected to be back at 12.30pm to pick her daughter up. Kay, who was a keen walker, decided to go for a short walk in the Rumataka Forest Park before she needed to return to pick up her daughter. At 10.45 a.m., Kay spoke to a dock worker, we're going to say dock worker one, and that is Department of Conservation, at the Visitor Information Centre in the Forest Park. He recommended two short walks that could be completed in under an hour, the Nature Trail or the Natonga Track, which started near a car park about 2k away. After speaking with Kay, the dock worker was checking that car park area and noticed Kay pulling in. Okay, so I haven't been able to find that second trail that they said, the nature one. So I'm wondering, it's been a few years, it might have changed names or something. But of course we hear about the Natonga Nature Walk. Um, and he said that the beginning was 2k away. And so that to me sounds like that she had to drive up here. Uh, to the beginning of the track to start it. Let's continue. Between 12.30 and 1.15pm, a second dock worker, dock worker 2, speaks to Kay at a work centre or a batch, which I showed you in the Forest Park, which I think is the batch that they're talking about, I'm going to say. Kay had stopped to ask for directions to her car. Kay was given directions. They involved walking along a driveway to the coast road, walking to the park's entrance about 300 to 400 metres away, then following the sealed Catchpool Valley Road for about 2k to her car. Which, if we're working off what I'm saying and what I'm thinking, that would make sense. So out onto a driveway, three or 400 metres to the park, and then having to go the 2k up to her car. But about five minutes later, when a third dock worker drives past, there is no one around. By this stage, Kay was already late to pick up her daughter. Sorry about that. I did fix that. I'm not going to start again because this will be the third recording of this story. But uh, let's continue. So, at about 1.45pm, Kay's daughter and a couple of friends drive to the park, but there was no sign of Kay. As there was no cell phone coverage, they briefly left the park to contact police. Now, I've got to say... Her daughter was onto it and the friends were onto it. She was uh, reported missing very, very soon. At 2pm, the police were contacted. Within 20 minutes, police had picked up Kay's daughter and returned to the park to search for Kay. At 2.30pm, police officially logged their search. By 4pm, a search and rescue team, including dogs, were at the park, along with Kay's friends and family, searching for any sign of Kay, but they couldn't find her. What would follow would be an extensive search by many. More than 40 specialists and Landstar searchers combed trails, tracks, bush, logging areas, roadside verges and streams. Police divers cleared the Catchpool stream and into the Wainuiamata River. Police search dogs were used along with helicopters and heat-seeking camera equipment. Kay was lightly clad and not equipped for nights in the bush. The weather during the search was very cold, wet and windy. At this stage, police did not believe that there was any foul play involved. <sighs> with all... It was such a short space of time since she was seen last or she was reported, you know, seen and then reported missing. With all this stuff, you think they would have found something. Kay's locked silver Toyota Corolla hatchback was found in the Catchpool car park that day. Some reports say the daughter found it, others say it was these searches. Now, the reason I 
have pointed out about the car is because at the moment, it looks like the car is found up the top at the beginning of the Natonga Trail. However, once we go on, it appears like people are saying that it's down the bottom where the um, information centre is. So, I don't know. If someone else knows or can work it out, let me know in the comments below. Police were seeking information about a quad bike that was seen driving down Forest Road towards the Coast Road about 1.45 to 1.50 p.m. on Monday the 13th of June, which is the day that Kay went missing, so up that Coast Road. Also a grey vehicle on the same stretch of road going in the opposite direction about 30 minutes later. Now we're going to hear a few more times about this quad bike, but we're not going to hear about that car. On June the 16th, 2005, police announced that they had suspended the search and rescue phase of the search. Lower Hutt CIB is continuing background inquiries into Kay's unexplained disappearance. As part of the inquiry, police were appealing to anyone in the park that day and others using Coast Road to contact them. So just quickly before we move on, please come and take a look at our website, guys. Uh, a lot of work has gone to this, gone into it, and to store a lot of work to be done. But uh, all right, let's move on. We are at tvnz.co.nz. Title and date. Let's look. 2013. Case Stewart's disappearance remains a mystery. The disappearance of a woman in Rimantaka Forest Park remains a mystery. A coroner's report has revealed today. Kay Stewart, a former All Blacks physio, has not been seen since she went on a bushwalk in the Rimutaka Forest Park near Wellington to fill in time before picking up her daughter on June the 13th, 2005. Her body has never been found. Detective Inspector Mike Johnson says the investigation into Kay's disappearance was extensive and has been revisited a number of times over the years. He said, I have read and considered the police file, it is in my view that the disappearance of Mrs K Stewart remains a mystery. I have not identified any direct evidence that a crime has been committed. In Coroner Gary Evans' findings released today, the report said the court was, quote, satisfied on all evidence before it that, sadly, Mrs Stewart is dead. However, how and where she died could not be determined. Now, there's a little bit of information here about some previous mental health history um, with Kay, but I don't think it's so relevant to the story, but you're more than welcome to go look and form your own opinion. Bob, her husband, said she had been taking her medication and was concerned undue weight would be given to his wife's mental health in the coroner's report, saying any suggestion that there was a clear link between her death and her illness would be harmful to the ongoing investigation. And I can completely understand what he is talking about. Uh, in at least one case we've covered on here and other cases that I've known, it seems, um, from my perspective and sometimes from the family's perspective, that once the police hear of mental health issues, that they automatically think oh well it can't be any foul play then it's got to be mental health and then for some reason it's the searches aren't the same or it feels like the police aren't taking it as seriously as they should they just sort of oh, put it on the back burner it's just mental health I don't know that's my perspective don't shoot me you may feel different Mr Stewart believed his wife was most likely a victim of a random act of violence However, he said, like police, he would not rule out that her mental health at the time was such that she could have became disorientated and got lost, dying well outside the search area. Detective Inspector Johnson said in line with that possibility that she became disorientated was the fact that Mrs Stewart was recorded seeking directions from a dock worker back to the Ford, presumably to return to her car. 40 to 45 minutes after the time she arranged to meet her daughter. Mrs Stewart was in an area of the park described as, or described as difficult to get lost in, the report said, or the report read. 
and the fact that Mrs Stewart was still in the park some 40 to 45 minutes after the time she arranged to pick up her daughter is out of keeping with her character and not in behaviour and signifies that something went wrong. It is not known how Kay got to the dock worker 3 at the batch that he was staying at as there are no clear tracks leading from the nature trail or the Natonga track to his batch. Had she walked there via the roads, she would have passed her car. The report said the possibility that Kay became disorientated as a result of a medical event and walked beyond the search area and perished, quote, could not be elevated to the plane of probabilities, neither could the possibility that she ran into foul play. In consequence, the cause of Kay's death must remain undetermined. Mrs Stewart's daughter said her mother had been really positive about things and said the family would always see signs if she become, was becoming unwell. She said she had never seen her mother suddenly go from well to unwell, uh, saying it would normally happen over the course of a week at least. She said in a statement to police that she had seen a European man aged 30 to 40 years old driving a quad bike past the information office near the entrance to the park close to where her mother's car was parked when she arrived at the park to find her late mother. So this is what we hear from the daughter who said her mum's car was parked at the entrance to the park, uh, which differs from what I th understood or what we were hearing. So, but I don't know what's going on there. That's weird. The quad bike was never found in spite of a widespread search and a $50,000 reward offer. There have been no substantiated sightings of her. Her bank accounts remain untouched, her passport unused, and no unidentified missing woman match her description. The court is satisfied on all evidence before it that sadly Mrs Stewart is dead, the report said. And uh, as sad as it is, that's really the only conclusion. Again, in 2013, this is the nzherald.co.nz. Missing woman's husband seeks closure. The husband of missing woman, Kay Stewart, says he won't have closure until his wife remains are found. And only, quote, the lousiest person in the world knows where she lies. Somebody killed my wife, Bob Stewart said after his wife's inquest in Wellington today. Closure might come for us when her remains are found, he said. It's an indignity and it's an insult to this family that Kay's remains lie somewhere. We don't know and we can't visit, he said. Again, he said the lousiest person in the world knows where she is buried. She was formally declared dead by Coroner Gary Evans at the inquest today with the place and cause of death undetermined. Mr Stewart said he remained convinced his wife of 34 years had been murdered. That's what I believe, that's what all Kay's friends and family believe, he said. He believed the key to her disappearance was a quad bike rider seen leaving the forest park on the day she went missing, who has never been identified. The 62-year-old spoke to the dock worker, number one, about 10.45am, who recommended she take either the nature trail or the Natonga track. He saw her a short time later parking in the Catchpool car park near the entrance to the Natonga track. More than two hours later, she approached another dock worker, number two, who was living at Hunter's Batch and asked directions back to her car. By then, she was already 40 minutes late to pick up her daughter. Neither of the tracks recommended by the first dock worker would have taken her to the batch, and if she had walked on the road, she would have passed the car. The witnesses have been eliminated from the inquiry after extensive investigation by police. So remember that comment. The witnesses have been eliminated from the inquiry after extensive investigation by police. Coroner Evans questioned police detective Sergeant Mike Sears about the final sighting and whether it raised questions about Kay's state of mind. He asked whether she may have already been disorientated and could have gotten lost and walked outside the search area before being overcome by hypothermia. Mr Sears told the coroner the scenario had been investigated and could not be dismissed. 
Mr Sears detailed the three searches of the forest park, which included the use of police cadaver dogs, which found no sign of Mrs Stewart. He said he was satisfied that had she been in the search area, her body, clothing or jewellery would have been located. A review of the police investigation by Detective Inspector Mike Johnson in 2012 had concluded there were four possible scenarios, the most likely being that she was the victim of foul play. Next was that she had become lost and disorientated and walked outside of the search area. The final two possibilities uh, were unlikely, and one was that she... <coughs> um, <laughs> I can't say it. I'm not allowed to. Um, or she had deliberately staged her death, but like I say, they were considered unlikely. During the inquest, Kay told the coroner he didn't believe his wife's history of being unwell played a role in her disappearance. Anyone with information call Wellington Police on 04 381 2000 or Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. But we're going to have that all that information in the description box below. And let's move on. If you do have any information about Kay's case or any of the cases that we cover on the channel, please contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one. It's anonymous. You can also visit them online. Contact the 105 police number. That's not the emergency number. You can also go uh, to police.govt.nz and do it through there as well. Email me nzmissing at gmail.com if you have any case suggestions or want to uh, give me or talk to me, I should say. We are on Facebook. We are on podcast. Just search for us, New Zealand Mysteries. If you could support the channel with a $3 donation to help victims and their family and the work that we're doing, that would be fantastic. You can go to uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash nzmysteries and there's other links in the description box below for PayPal if you want to use that. Your choice, whatever. But the most important thing, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. These are really important. Help us get the information to more people. And also, please click the little bell and hit all. So if we release another video or an update, that you'll get notified on YouTube. Thank you so much, everyone. So you'll for your support, I should say. I'm getting mouth mush. Uh, whichever way you decide to support the channel, whether it's sharing, subscribing, liking, donating, you're doing a wonderful job and I thank you a lot. Right, let's keep going. There is uh, something I want to sort of bring up in the case and I was umming and ahhing about whether to or not, but I have a feeling that, you know, it's part of the case, I guess, in a way. And if you go looking for information about Kay's case, this is going to be around. And, okay, so this was released in 2015. I'm not explaining it very well, so I'll try and... Stuff.co.nz, Case Stewart Cold Case, What the Dock Worker Told Police. This is Dock Work Num dock worker number two and uh, this is the one that Kay approached and asked for directions back to her car. So I'm just going to read a little bit but I'm not going to go into too much. Police suggested to the last person to see Wellington woman Kay Stewart alive before she vanished during a short walk a decade ago that he might have accidentally hit her with his quad bike according to released police documents a transcript of police interviews and statements about the case released by the Ministry of Justice under the Official Information Act revealed the suggestion was put to the dock worker, then dock worker, who strongly denied it. According to a transcript of an interview with him in April 2009, a detective from the Wainuiamata Police told him police had concerns about his account of where he saw Stuart. Um... But I don't want anyone to go looking at this information and think, oh, you know, there's a suspect. Because it, no, he's not, not at all. And I really don't know why 
um, stuff released this information. I don't think it's very fair to this person. Um, I'm not quite sure what they were hoping to achieve out of it. I do like stuff. I use them a lot. But this is just my opinion. Don't come for me. Don't shoot me. It revealed that this guy did give DNA sample to police and a forensic examination of his clothing and the batch was performed in 2005, including luminol testing used to detect traces of blood. Uh Foul play was considered by police as the most likely cause, but all persons of interest were alibied and eliminated after extensive police inquiries. This is coming from the coroner and the coroner's inquest. Police did reveal in June that they planned to re-interview some people involved in the case because fresh information had surfaced after a story about Kay appeared in the Dominion Post and on staff. The fresh information is not understood to relate to doc worker number two. Now, I just wanted to throw that in um, because it can show you how, um, how, how some things I don't think need to be reported. I don't know. And I want to be very, very careful uh, when I'm doing my cases I mean, everyone is, I'm just going to move on. I'm not going to dig myself into a hole any further. You can take what you want from that. Okay. Stuff.co.nz. This was 2019. Sadness over the death of husband of missing Wellington woman, Kay Stewart. Bob Stewart put his life on hold after the mysterious disappearance of his wife, Kay Stewart. The retired Karori physio vanished on June 13, 2005 after visiting Rimutaka Forest Park for a short walk. Despite a huge effort by police, search and rescue volunteers, the army and her family, the 62-year-old was never found. Daughter Jane said her father died on January the 8th after a short battle with cancer. The 86-year-old never got over the disappearance of his wife, she said. Um, and this is extremely upsetting um, and I hear this quite often and it's just horrible and that's why I do what I do that's why you guys support my channel that's why you like, why you subscribe, why you share, why you donate because these families, they don't deserve to die not knowing what happened to their loved one and some of them are never the same I don't think any of them are ever the same to be honest and I have never lost someone um, in this way but even when I just think of lose, losing a family member the, f the hopeless feelings are just awful I can just not imagine these poor families I just can't mum and dad had a great life together and had planned to travel overseas but he really stopped doing anything after we lost mum the family were tight-knit and supported each other, but her father's death was very emotional for the whole Stuart clan, she said. I certainly am not wanting to bring anything up if the family sees this. Uh, I'm not wanting grief for you by bringing the story up again. I'm hoping that we can get justice for your dad and your mum. There was always the hope that mum would be found. It is sad to see dad go without mum being found and dad not having that closure. Her father always believed it was foul play and could be sold. He worked closely with the media, taking every opportunity to keep her name out there in the hope someone would come forward with the information needed to solve the case. In 2013, Coroner Gary Evans found Kay Stewart died of, quote, undetermined causes in the Rimataka Forest Park on June 13, 2005. Her body was thought to have been destroyed or become irrecoverable or lost. As well as a loving father, Jane remembered him as someone with a passion for ham radio and Formula One racing. He won numerous trophies in ham radio competitions and his house was readily identifiable by a huge antenna on it my grandfather was much the same he was into ham radio as well 
Stewart helped establish New Zealand's television network and was involved in putting up the Mount Kaukau television transmitter and the introduction of colour TV. Wow. He was also a stalwart of the Northland Memorial Community Centre for many years. Jane believed the mystery of her mother's disappearance could be solved and urged anyone with information to contact Detective Sergeant Mike Sears of Lower Hutt Police. But um, you guys know that we're going to have that information in the description box below. So, I don't know, guys. I don't like to uh, speculate or make assumptions. Um, I, I don't know. It could be any... F well, it could be a couple of possibilities, really. And I just... I never understand how people can just simply vanish, just like, poof, and they're gone. And there's nothing left. Um... I don't know much about cadaver dogs. If she was just outside, just outside the search area, um, would they have s smelt her? Uh, did she get disorientated that day? Did she have a fall, hit her head um, and got lost? I mean, it says that she was in an area that she couldn't have got lost in, but she managed it. But she, it was said that she was an experienced walker as well and it sounded like she had her full faculties it doesn't sound like she had dementia or was losing her like memory or train of thought or anything like that I mean the horrible thing is it could be foul play it happens all the time I don't know all I know is there's a family out there that wants justice or needs justice and uh, if you have any information if you're around that day if you have uh, relatives that live there, did live there, anything like that, for goodness sakes, just share it everywhere. I don't know, everywhere. Um, and hopefully, hopefully someone sees it, has some information. It's been a long time. We need justice for this family. I'm going to see you next time, guys. Thank you for every little bit that you do for my channel. I support, love each and every one of you. I will see you next time. Bye for now.